Huta Mountain is one of the four most important mountains for Buddhism in China. In its heyday, there are about 200 over temples, and there are only about 30 nowadays, but the place still gets about 3.3 million visitors a year. So let's find out why all these people choose to come to Puto Mountain. Let's go. Join me on this journey. I'm Michelle Lean. Welcome to Travelog. Puto Shan Island, or the island of Puto Mountain, is part of Zhou Shan Prefecture in Zhejiang Province. But this is where it gets a little confusing, as you'll often hear of the Zhou Shan Islands being referred to as mountains. And that's because once upon a time, they were. Now all you can see are the tops of these mountains, and they are what forms the group of Zhou Shan Islands. There are more than a thousand islands here, and while Puto Shan is only one of them, it gets more than its fair share of the visitors here. And the reason for this is simple, Buddhism. To get to Puto Shan, you can fly to Zhou Shan Airport, and from there, take a bus and ferry across to Puto Shan Island. There are four flights a week from Beijing, and two or three a day from Shanghai. There are also flights from most major cities in China. Oh, and also remember, when you arrive at Puto Shan, there's a landing charge of 160 RMB per person. The first temple built on Puto Shine Island was in honor of the Goddess of Mercy. A long time ago, a Japanese monk was traveling with a statue of Guan Yin, the Goddess of Mercy, when he got caught in a storm at sea. And what happened was he started praying to Guan Yin in the hope that he would arrive somewhere safely. And he did. He arrived at the island of Puto Mountain. And that's how Buddhism came to Puto Mountain. This is where the first temple was. And the locals say that it wasn't the pilgrims or the monks that chose the place where the Guanyin statue was to be erected, but it was actually Guanyin herself. Now, legend has it that it wasn't the Japanese sailor who chose Putoshan as the location for a temple to the Goddess of Mercy, but the Goddess of Mercy herself, who it seems saved the Japanese sailor's life just so he could erect a temple here. The temple is the only one on the island built in the architectural style of the Tang Dynasty, and it may be small, but it's certainly quite important. Puto Shan is one of the four famous Buddhist mountains in China. Thanks to its amazing landscape, it's sometimes called Heaven on the Sea and the Kingdom of Buddhists. Many legends are told about how the Goddess of Mercy came to Puto Shan. The most famous is about a monk who had stolen a statue of the goddess from a temple in China, planning to take it to Japan. However, out at sea, he was caught in a terrible storm. He prayed to the Goddess of Mercy, promised to build the temple in her honor if his life was saved, and lo and behold, an invisible hand guided his boat to Puto Shan. Going down the pilgrim walk, you probably won't notice these stone carvings immediately because of how intricate they are and how well they blend into the surroundings. But they depict the setting free of captured animals because I was told earlier that in Buddhism they believe that all creatures are created equal and no human should capture any living creature or animal. It's really, really sweet. <laughs> What are they doing? Uh, they are throwing the coin. Why? Uh, for in Chinese, uh, Guan Yin literally means uh, uh, when everyone is in trouble, just make a sound and call her name. Then Guan Yin would come to help you immediately. And Guan Yin is the goddess mercy? Is that one? Yes, this one. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right, so if ever you need help, you just throw coins into this thing and it makes a clink clink sound after which you'll know to come help you okay so i'll give you one and we'll yeah. chuck it in okay and you, 
Call her name? Yeah, call her okay. name. Okay, so... Oh, <laughs> you I did. got it in! Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, you, you did. That was a pretty good try. <laughs> Puji Temple is the largest temple on Putoshan Island. Built in 1916, it still serves as a place of worship. The story is told about Emperor Zhuang, who visited the temple disguised as a peasant. A monk refused to let him in through the main door and instead insisted that he should use a side entrance. This infuriated the emperor and he ordered that no one should ever be allowed to use the main entrance again. And this is why if you visit Puji Temple, you have to enter through a side door. Puji and the other temples on Putoshan Island are busiest on the first and 15 days of each lunar month. Another important day of worship is the birthday of the Goddess of Mercy, which falls on the 26th day of the first lunar month. But even if you're not a Buddhist, you can get a taste of what life's like here for a monk by having lunch with the temple's residents. A fully vegetarian buffet will set you back 10 RMB. But remember, Buddhism preaches that nothing must ever go to waste. So only take what you can eat. And don't forget to do your own dishes afterwards. Our next temple stop is Huiji Temple, the tallest temple on the island. The temple is six stories high, and one thing you can't help noticing is that the roofs at each level have different colored tiles. Aside from the most complete and astounding view of Putoshat Island, Huiji Temple is also famous for its large collection of ancient brick carvings portraying, you guessed it, the Goddess of Mercy. If you want to make it up to the temple, it's a leisurely trek up more than a thousand stone steps. The path itself is paved with carvings, ancient calligraphy, and lotus leaves, all testifying to the presence of the Goddess of Mercy. It's said that walking up this path cleanses you of all your sins. Alternatively, you can also take a cable car ride up. Puto Shan's about over 300 meters high, so if you get tired of walking up this steep hill, you can always take a cable car down and it's a great view on the way down as well. On the walk up to Huiji Temple, you may well get a demonstration of Buddhist dedication. When you see the monks and others stop every three steps to bow towards the statue of the Goddess of Mercy, you get a real understanding of the power of Buddhism to inspire devotion. I took the cable car down just to get a different view. This time, I wanted to see not the people, but the reason for their visit the temples, and the amazing landscape. At one time, there were around 100 temples on Putoshan Island, but now there are only around 30 left. From the cable car, you can also see some of the local houses. Most of the people who live on this island are Buddhists, and in most of the houses, you'll find altars dedicated to the Goddess of Mercy. By the way, to get to Huiji Temple, you should take bus number two from the port. Another must-see temple is Fayu Temple at the foot of Foding Mountain, which is at the northern end of the famous Thousand Step Beach. Originally called the Sea Tide Nunnery, Fayu Temple started out in life as a simple hut, but it has expanded over the years, and it is now the second largest temple on the island. In 1699, the Qing Emperor Kangxi moved an entire palace building from his capital in what is today Nanjing to Putoshan, where it housed a shrine to the Goddess of Mercy. 
It's interesting to note that the temple is built on six layers so that it follows the natural contours. An entrance ticket into Faiyu Temple will set you back a mere 5 RMB. It gets kind of busy during the day up in Puto Mountain with all the people visiting the temples. But if you opt to stay here, you can enjoy the tranquility of the early mornings and the late evening when everyone's gone. And I'll tell you this, it's superb because there's a cool breeze in my hair and there's so much greenery around, the birds are chirping and this wonderful smell. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but it smells a little bit like jasmine. Oh, it's wonderful. It's so nice to get away from the city once in a while. I reckon one of the best times to visit Putoshan is in spring. This time, I'm here in May, and it's really beautiful. The trees are in full bloom, and the air is filled with the soft perfume of the flowers. It's sort of like walking around the edge of an aromatherapy pot. The weather is pretty perfect too. Sunny in the day, and cool in the evenings. And even if you aren't religious, it's easy to get a sense of tranquility here. You learn to slow down, breathe in deep, and enjoy the quiet of the area. It can get a little busy with the flood of tourists, but if you stay away from the main tourist route, you'll be able to find some peace and quiet. There are quite a few four-star hotels in Putoshan, but we chose to stay at a monastery.